I love the fact that Mash himself is such a meathead. <laughs> no, no, there's no NTR. We also have plant tentacles pretty much very close to growing already. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of excited about this winter season because this is the first time I'm starting from scratch kind of thing. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. We are gonna be talking about anime now. So this is the part where I normally say, welcome to the small world of Jay, but this time around, it's not just me. I brought a friend over so that you guys don't have to hear just my annoying voice. You're, You're not, not gonna hear, hear two annoying, annoying voices. voices and hopefully a banter will occur. So I brought in uh, another big anime fan, just like me. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello there, people. Uh, you may have seen me in the chat. I am Gladys Katon, and yeah, I'm a big fan of anime, manga, and all things art. Hey, I'm Gladys. also a half dragon lion. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah, so Gladys is a is a regular in my uh, stream community, but she's also a, a pretty talented artist. She's done some of the artworks so, of. So, you know, here and there. She also shares a lot of the same takes and tastes I have in anime. So I asked her, you know, uh, to talk talk with the anime with me for this winter season because let's be honest, quite frankly, I'm always getting bored listening to myself talk. <laughs> uh, so this time, uh, at least hopefully now, I have someone to banter with. All right. Okay. So before we actually discuss uh, the six anime that we decided will be, we will talk about every week. Uh, do you have any thoughts about the winter uh, anime season that, that just started? Like, do you have any particular thoughts about it? The overall opinions? thoughts? Yeah, overall thoughts or expectations or things you're hoping for, whatever. Well, things are getting pretty excited because, like, there's a lot of seasons, season two that I've been waiting, and there are some anime that are kind of sus, and some sus. are kind of meh. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the 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 sus part definitely. I mean, maybe you can bring yeah, a touch yeah. upon some of those sus stuff. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, uh, I like coming from the fall season and like, okay, yeah, we, we we it was pretty much obvious that everybody, what everything will be big, right? Everybody yeah. expected freedom to be big. Everybody expected Jujutsu Kaisen to be big. There wasn't a lot of sussiness. I not. I don't think so. But yeah, this particular one was weird. Like the little... biggest sus of it. <laughs> I think I can talk about the fact that I I tried to record myself watching uh, gushing over magical girls, and then I realized, you know what? I can't get away with this. <laughs> I cannot upload this. Borderline. Picture. Yeah, no, not border. It is. It's, it's pretty. Much... No, no, no. It's in the tiny, 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 tiny edge of it. Then... Yeah, it's but tiny. I mean. We also have plant tentacles pretty much very close to growing already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, okay. And then we have Chain Soldier, which is not as etchy, but still very etchy. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So yeah. But by the way, before we talk, uh, we talk about the big things here. We do have a Patreon where you can watch a lot of the videos that we will be discussing now. If you want to see our reactions, please uh, give. Uh, Give a little bit of uh, support here and there. Go support okay? the goat, guys. He is the goat. <laughs> hey, the oh, goat. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you, Gladys. Yeah. yeah, but definitely, I'll be adding more benefits there here and there, okay? So, with that said, uh, yes, um, I'm actually also very excited about this particular winter season because it's a fresh start for me. Uh, I was a big anime fan in my youth. I kind of stopped to play video games, then board games. Then I became a cold corporate slave so nothing for a while <laughs> and then i recently got back into video gaming and then very very recently got back to anime so I, i'm kind of excited about this winter season because this is the first time i'm starting from scratch kind of thing because when i started really becoming back into anime i was somewhere within the middle of the fall season right so this is the first time in a long time that i'm going to be an anime fan right from the beginning and watching every episode and reacting to it just as much as where everybody is, right? So I I can finally join the zeitgeist and talk about stuff while everybody's talking <laughs> about it and not talking about, oh, yeah, it's too I'm too late. Or, yeah, um, 
It's already it obsolete to be like that. <laughs> to be like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is what I actually wasn't planning on watching, but you, Gladys, convinced me to watch it. So uh, of I guess course I did. let's talk about Fluffy Paradise. Now, before we actually talk about the first episode and the second, because that's how it kind of synced up, let, why don't you mm-hmm. tell everybody what Fluffy Paradise is about? Well, basically, Fluffy Paradise is something almost everyone have got to dream on. Like, I mean, back then when I was a kid, I would like to, you know, dream about me making friends with animals and <laughs> being true. loved by the animal. And then this anime came up. Bam! I'm hooked. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did read the manga before the anime, so like... Are you up to date? Yeah, yeah, I'm up to date. It's kind of, let's say, a, a little slow on the translation update. Ah, I see. The manga, so yeah. All right. But yeah, <laughs> uh, design-wise, it's an upgrade. Trust me. I know. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I should check the manga because of what you just what you mentioned. Yeah, but yeah especially I... the tiger design. It's very detailed. Very detailed. Like, yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. It is definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's an anime about patting head giving head pats or floofing or cuddling cute pet animals and not it's so cute animals but are drawn you know yeah <laughs> or drawn to cute animal animal. So yeah, it's about this uh, woman who who gets isekai, dies of overwork again, and she gets reborn <laughs> in another world as a is she three years old? I guess. Yeah, like a three-year-old child with the three power. Or four. Yeah, and so basically, she gets Isekai to another world, and the god of this world, this young Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> I was, I get the first. That's the first thing I thought about when I saw the god. Okay, why does he look like Jesus Christ without the beard? <laughs> okay, so basically, he told her that okay, I'm gonna give you to the that's the world. You have to, you know, I'm I'm gonna ask. I have a task for you, but. I'll give you any power you ask for. And then she decides, she asks to, I want the power to pat animals on the head or cuddle them or whatever. And the god All the fluffy her, things. Yeah, all the fluffy things. And the, 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 the god goes, Really? I, 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 <laughs> yes. I give you power and that's what you ask for? But okay. So sure, basically, any, basically, her power is any non human in this world automatically loves her. It doesn't matter if it's a carnivore or if it's a monster. As long as it's not a human, they love her automatically. Basically, it's her quest to be able to befriend and cuddle every single animal that she While well, trying to save the world from something, something, something. Yeah. Actually, I want to talk about <laughs> kind of that. But yeah. So, my first thoughts when I was watching the episode, oh my god, this thing is so saccharine. Like, I think I'm going to die of <laughs> diabetes just watching this. Like, okay. Yeah. It's not just that. It's about a three-year-old child. So, you know, he, she, like they're like, acting like a kid. Li- you can't not like it. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Like, it's really... It's basically... Like, like I can describe Nima is that it's Anya without all the annoying faces. <laughs> it just acting oh, yeah. like an actual child kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she's drawn like a child. And this is actually where I have my first... I don't want to say complaint, but comment about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at how Nima, the main character, behaves, this did not need to be an isekai. I get it. I think maybe they had to make an isekai so it would sell better, I guess. But I guess the, this whole like, an adult getting re- reincarnated, right? Did, like other isekai, did they, you know, inherit some of their their skills in their past life? Or do they have knowledge? Right? No. Pretty much Nima behaves like what like she a is. Child. Like a child, right? And yeah. The more I think about it, watching the two episodes we watched already, what's the point of being Isikai? She acts like a kid, talks like a kid, behaves, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, she has the mind of a child. I, where's the Isikai part of this? I mean, yeah, there is some internal monologue, but here and there, but so far, it doesn't really seem to affect the plot kind of thing. So, I, uh, to me, the, the Isikai app portion of it is kind of unnecessary. So to speak, uh, uh, even in the manga, actually, yeah. you, uh, the only part that would be easy guide is the inner monologue that you have. 
uh-huh. and her ways of doing stuff. But yeah, usually it's reserved in the inner monologue. And does it affect the plot? From... It kind of uh, helps her do uh-huh. stuff that okay. normally children won't do. But since she's not a child, she knows how to do it. But she uh-huh. just have to make it look like it's just a childish thing. But at the same time, not. <laughs> Uh, she she, she got to act like a kid, so she find ways in the manga that will ma- that will make her, you know, what she says like, no, no, I got it from this guy or Papa said this or that. Uh huh. So all she's right. not showing just she's the one who planned it all kind of stuff. She just wants you know animals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what else? What else? struck you about this anime honestly it's just the animals i just love animals <laughs> so this just kind of hooks me on it mm-hmm. and in the manga it's uh, not yet finished so yeah but it's everything is all about animals and how she interacts with them and in a way kind of makes her op oh yeah i was kind of mentioning that like but how like, did you feel it was portrayed in, the ep- in particularly episode one and two the episode we've oh, seen so far it was great although when you uh, when if you remember the god said that you will be loved by all animals except humans but when you see it even the other humans are you know getting enraptured by her cute oh, she's ridiculously cute for one thing <laughs> see <laughs> yeah she yeah. is adorable child and the banter with the prince is kind of okay. fun Okay, I, I'd like to get your thoughts on this because I have this in my head, okay? And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the only non-manga reader uh-huh. to think about this, okay? But I don't know. I found the prince kind of creepy. <laughs> like, I was going on... So after watching it, right? So I went on X slash Twitter to see how people were thinking about uh-huh. the episode. And a lot of them were going, Oh my god, he's so cute. He's treating her like a, a big brother already. And, and here I am going, He's kind of touchy with her. Especially think, for a girl that he just met? Like, I think she's more like an annoying friend who doesn't, who's bored and not okay. to play with the kids. So it's just me that... I don't know. I, I just found it kind of weird and creepy that, you know, you just met her and you keep insisting on putting this child on your lap among other things. And like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just my cynical self, but I just felt... Maybe. <laughs> I just kind of felt like the the prince was king. It's more uh, annoying to me. <laughs> you are very close to be to grooming, my friend. Kind of thing. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking anyway. When I then, but again, okay, okay. Admittedly, if you watch my reaction video to this, I was saying because uh, I was watching the intro, right? And I was going, uh-huh. and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're, you're a manga reader, right? Uh-huh. Are they setting up this character to be the a pseudo weird love interest? No, not really. In the manga, <laughs> she he acts like, uh, let's just say her special card to get into the floppy end. <laughs> she's more, he's more of a way to you know to make things easier, I guess. So she can he she's protected and like, yo, uh, I'm the prince, so you can harm her and you know, do just like a shortcut, like. In the manga, they were planning something like a project, and uh-huh. it's kind of big. But when the prince arrived, like, hey, I support you. Let's do this. So like, everyone's like, oh, since the prince supported, uh, let's do it. I guess. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. that was kind of her his role. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, he he doesn't get creepier. No. Okay, good, good. It's that's more a... like a kind of a side character. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was actually main, mainly worried about, at least from watching the first episode kind of thing. Like, okay, the other one, and I'd really like to get your thoughts on this one, okay? Again, mm-hmm. I'm watching this from an outsider's perspective. Is that, you know, uh, after watching episode one, oh, it's so cute, it's so cute, 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 see. And then they start introducing things that I really got fascinated about. Like, for a show that's all about cute animals, the subplot about it is very dark. Because it's part? kind of... It's kind of like implying that the fact that, okay, she's so... Okay, again, this is the cynical me talking, right? Uh-huh. But I got the impression that I, that there might be a subplot in the future. Again, I never watched... I read, read the manga, but my speculation is that are they setting up a subplot where 
different political factions are trying to exploit her for their own ends. Because, okay, so the, the, you could already tell, especially with the way the conversation with God in this show, that there, and the fact that there's Beastmen in, in the intro, right? And there's always racism involved when Beastmen are are yep. there in yep. every anime, right? So I had already had in my back of my mind, okay, they're going to deal with racism and human oppression, okay? And then when the priest guy comes in and starts talking about, oh, it's the divine... Uh, right to have human supremacy. Oh, okay, okay. We have evil Not gonna religious... Not going to lie, even in the manga, in the anime, I hate him, period. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's already being super obvious that we're, we're going with the whole JRPG trope of evil, yeah. malicious, religious organization, right? But then they start to see all these nobles talk about how they want to train her. It's like, are we going to have this whole plot line where different factions are trying to get their hands on her and exploit her because you're right she is becoming overpowered already especially after mm -hmm. she befriended the red freaking dragon right <laughs> there's this weird backdrop right of super cutesy animals and super cutesy main character mm -hmm. and yet in the background you have all these adults talking about how they're going to use her power so it's like okay have I just stumbled upon a more shonen anime <laughs> that Honestly, I could not tell because in the manga, okay. it's, it's in a part where there's something going on with the, uh, another tribe of beastmen, but the translation is cut off, so that's all I am known. But okay, so there uh, is a subplot coming in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Alright, okay. And so it's not unfounded, alright. Yeah, there's like, you know, that typical racism stuff going on. And the oppression, and the poor, and the, the rich men. But, but yeah, it also involves the animals, of course. Like, I mean, by animals, I mean the monster. Like, you know, like goblins and stuff. Who also love her. <laughs> they are treated also, I mean, they are treated as animals. So, that means, like, the goblins, the monsters, spiders, uh, they like, you know, our protagonists. Yeah, but I mean, of course the humans don't. I I think the the anime did a good job of at least portraying it without showing it. Like you don't yep. really see any cruelty from the humans, but you could tell by the way they talk, by the way yeah. they're coded. That yeah, okay, I can already tell that this society is not very progressive, kind yep. of thing. So that that's that, that's what I mean by saying a bit. Uh, where I'm a bit surprised, like the darkness. It's almost vaguely Game of Thrones like. <laughs> in yeah. the way it's presenting it kind of thing and it's like since it's uh, the protagonist is a cute child it's like when you see it like as a child you don't understand what they're saying yeah so when they're portrayed it's like kind of subtle and light but as an adult like oh no 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 no, no. yeah and like so that. yeah which is actually like i got excited to that part but like i said I think part of my, my issue is I don't... Well, one thing, I'm not the target demographic of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But yeah, I, I think I might continue it. At least I'll give it the three-episode rule. At least for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before. But actually... No, actually, scratch that. I promised to watch it with you, so I, ha I have yes. no choice <laughs> but to watch it till the end. But I'm so actually far, kind of like want to see how they're going to do it because like the manga is only up to what chapter 18 the translation so I, I don't know more than that okay oh yeah interesting I'm actually I'm surprised why they animated it if that, that there's so few yeah chapters that too, available because normally like, they would wait for like what 40 50 chapters yeah and the uh, manga hasn't updated for like what two years the translation of it, of course. I'm, I'm, well, that's the translation. Uh, but... but the raw, I wonder. Yeah, the wonder, yeah. All I can say is, if you love animals, watch it. I promise <laughs> you won't regret it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had one more thing to note when episode uh -huh. two came out. Yeah, I kept thinking Jurassic Park. <laughs> like, see, those are not dragons. Oh, okay. Those are raptors. Those are raptors. Yeah. <laughs> not dragons. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> you have a point. <laughs> if you want to see just... my actual reactions when I saw those, please go to the Patreon. <laughs> those are just raptors with wings. <laughs> All right. Um... But, yeah, the design is actually, I mean, in the dragon part, the design is much better in the manga. I can imagine, but yeah. Maybe they simplified it for the anime to make it more cute, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so that's Fluffy Paradise. So uh, we Dang. will be giving our, up our thoughts on each episode moving forward, okay? So yeah, since this, we were talking about the premieres, we might talk a little bit more about the premise more than the normal since we're talking about episode ones, right? But I'm sh uh, be sure uh, moving forward, episode two, threes, we'll be talking more about the plot going forward, okay? Let's talk about the Apothecary Diaries now. Okay, so this is it, a new anime, okay? Uh, it's Core 2. We are now at episode 13, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, yeah, I, I, I love Apothecary Diaries when it came out because... And, and, and I think I enjoyed it a lot more because when I first watched it, I thought it would be CSI China. And I love mysteries. Like, okay, okay, uh, detective, crime scene, investigation. And it turns out it's not really like that. So I was kind of disappointed. It's more on the drama and politics of the inner, the, you know, the rare palace. But then as mm -hmm. the more I watch it, like, you know what? It's not what I expected, but it's fine. I, It's actually, I liked it. I'm, I'm starting to like And it kind of grew on me in that regards. Uh, what about you? How, how did you feel about Core 1? Actually, I don't plan on reading this or rather watching it because, <laughs> when, you know, when people hype things up, I, I generally don't like watching, you know, okay. things that are way too popular. Or, yeah, you know. I kind but of feel then, that way about battle anime. <laughs> then you were watching it. And the history is, I what I kept watching it, I kept yeah. watching and watching. Then I read the manga all the way up to the most updated chapter. <laughs> yeah, I actually have the opposite effect. I I stopped. I did not want to read the manga because there's certain there's certain anime where after watching, I I can't wait to read the manga. Right, like like Oshinoko. Yeah. I really loved Oshinoko. I went ahead and read the manga, but for some reason I couldn't do that with Apothecary Diaries. Like. I think it's the way they reveal information. Again, they said that yeah. I do not want to read it because I do not want it to be revealed to me that way. I want the anime to reveal it to me. So, but it's weird, right? Because I do, for every mm -hmm. other anime that I kind of got excited for, I do go to the manga. I went ahead with Free Ren. I went ahead with Oshi Oshinoko. So I'm updated with both in the manga. But the Postcard Diaries, like I can't bring myself to to read it. It's like, like no, I, I kind of. I kind of don't want to know. <laughs> so I, I guess it's a testament to the way Apothecary Diaries reveals this information that I yep. feel this way. Also, I kind of want to mention that I really like Mao Mao as a female lead. Like, I mean, she's being portrayed as a cat and now. <laughs> and well, just a cat. I love like it. <laughs> but also an idea of a character who... Kind of like a girl. Yeah, it, like... I, I don't know if the author of Apothecary Diaries is a girl, but it, it really feels like Mau Mau is written by a girl. I guess you know so. what I mean? <laughs> like, there are yeah. so many female characters who, who every, oh, this is very feminist, and it turns out it's been written by a guy, and the guy, you know, what do you know? The girl's wearing a bikini, and you know, like the male gaze, right? But mm -hmm. Mau Mau's not like that. It's For me, Mau Mau is, is, seems like it's written by a girl who understands what a girl's going through. Again, I don't know, I don't know the gender of the author, but it feels that way yeah, to yeah. me. So it's testament to the author's skill that, that I feel that way about Mao Mao's characterization, that she feels very real, right? A very real, very smart woman who was unfortunate enough to live in a world that was very, that where women are treated as second class citizens. Yeah. But she's so smart that she can she manages to survive all survive of it. in that world. True is right. Yeah. So Mao Mao who was fired in previous episodes needs Has to now finally move back in move back, yeah. kind of like in a lower position, I think. A different position, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's now in, in Jinchi's personal court, I guess. I mean like it, it, uh not as inner court. Yeah, yeah. Because the the court where the other combines are living are kind of more like Higher yeah. level, I guess. Yeah, she's at the outer court, so outside of yeah. it, with where the officials live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay, so any particular thoughts you have on this particular episode? Well, since you know me, I am a manga reader. Yeah. I like the way they animate stuff. That's the reason why I keep continuing yeah. on watching the anime. By the way, I really want to know. Hmm? Yeah. What? By the way, I said I don't want to know what the manga says, but I'm also okay with spoilers. So if you if you uh, have to worry, mention something, it's fine. <laughs> I'm more of like seeing it as in the art perspective. Like yeah. the manga looks good. 
okay. but I want to see it animated. Uh-huh. I mean, the way they animated, you know, this anime is really good. Well, yeah. So, so like... I can't, I can't wait to see how they animate this part, this part, mm. and that part, because there are some uh, part of the manga that are much better when animated. Yeah. You know? So that's okay. the only thing that can I can say about the manga. Yeah. As for the episode 13, mm-hmm. this anime, let's just say it's going to get more interest. The next cases are going to get more gruesome mm-hmm. or like uh, um, more backstabby, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it does feel and that way. There's more political interest. In the upcoming part, I guess, or in the second season. No, oh, wait, next episode? Mm-hmm. How many episodes do they plan? 24? In those coming up episodes, they might, uh, let's say, reveal some darker secrets about the court, about Kinshi and Mamo's adop- adopted father. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I like that the whole adopted father thing. Yeah. The so in the, up, in the manga, it's like, that's the next part, I guess, after this uh, episode 13. Mm-hmm. But I guess it depends because you know they might shorten it, they might long make it lengthier. I guess. Yeah. How, do you have any particular epi- opinions about things that were revealed this particular episode? I mean, there's not much, I guess, in the uh, anime. It's more okay. like setting up everything, like the characters, the area where she's going to be, or how okay. she's treated in yeah. here, and. It's like it's kind of obvious that in this uh, outer court, mm. there's like a, a really big restriction, and mm. she gotta have to follow the hierarchy of the ladies. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, after a few chapters, it's going to get more wild. By wild, I mean she's going to be a little more in touch with the inner court. Mm-hmm. But okay. in this chapter, in the anime, in 13, it's, it's just a setting, more like, just a restart, you know, restart, just letting yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. me, I, I found it particularly interesting. Uh, I've always loved interactions with individual characters, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think there was an emphasis here on fa- found family, because there was a lot of yeah. talk of, from Mama about, okay, I have my dad, I have my sisters, I have my granny. And there was this really, the, the, there was the, the whole com- comedic interaction between her and the big sisters. On the Verdigris house, how they, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, how they dolled her up, and how said, like, "Hey, you have to bring, you have, don't forget to bring customers here." And of course, it's a joke, right? Yeah, but, I love that interaction. Yeah, <laughs> but it's 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 mm. nice to show that you're right about even without being a manga reader, they're already kind of uh, implying a lot of things. Like yeah. they they were already showing a, a particular character with a monocle, right? In a very dark. For boding, yeah. Ooh, creepy thing. <laughs> uh, cards to the table. I got spoiled about who this character is. I'm not gonna say oh, who he is, but I already really? know who he is. Yeah, I got spoiled. God, but I already know who he is, and I know what his importance in the story is. But I, mm-hmm. but I, I got very interested and very excited because, actually, to be honest, even the official Twitter account of Apothecary Dice were kind of already hyping this character up and saying, "Oh, get ready for this character. Get it ready for this character. Get yeah. ready for this character." So you know. So even if I wasn't spoiled, I was kind of okay. They're 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 presenting the quote unquote, I guess, lack of a better term, the bad guy uh, of this particular of arc. This part arc, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was very nice going back to talk about her family, because mm-hmm. typically, right from a writing perspective, if you're going to introduce a big bad, a big threat, you usually put the heroes in sort of celebratory relaxation kind of thing as a sort of rest bit before the calm before the storm kind of thing so that's how yeah. I kind of felt with the whole okay not only do I have a new job and I can come back come home anytime I want now you know they were establishing that she, she, her connections not mm-hmm. just with Jinshi and her and her new role but also reinforcing the fact that hey not only do I have a dad I have sisters I have a granny but unlike before, I can I can visit them anytime I want. So yeah. it kind of highlights the fact that they're important, and I like that. I like I like that from a uh, sorry guys, I'm a teacher, so I always think around these lines. <laughs> so I keep thinking, oh okay, yeah, the, the way they're setting it up 
is brilliant. The way they're they're building this up is 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 a good way to look at it, uh, kind of thing. Yeah, like the family part. Yeah, the, of the part, the yeah. Lesson. This uh, anime, like yeah. they're highlighting how families move in this era. I guess it, it yeah. kind of gives Mao Mao something to fight for. I guess if yeah. that's the way, because honestly. That was always the flaw. I, I, I say flaw, but it's not. It's only. It's very much a minor nitpick. I had of Mao Mao because uh, as brilliant as Mao Mao is, it's very unclear in Core cool One what she's fighting for. Like mm-hmm. she doesn't have a goal. Her own goal. Her only goal was I don't want to be disturbed. I want to be left yep. alone. But there. Yep. But now they're kind of establishing the fact that she does have a goal, even though she doesn't say it out loud. And that goal is I need to come back to my family. Right. I need to. Mm-hmm. Ch- I, I need a place to cherish it. That's why I have to be in this unfamiliar location, kind of thing. So yeah, that, that's the heart of really what I wanted to talk about in this situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, this, <laughs> also, uh, since you're you're uh, a manga reader, um, mm-hmm. so the, where there was this bunch of queen bees, queen bee bees coming in to basically bully Mao Mao. Ah, those lady because, in waiting. Yeah. Yeah, the lady, the court okay. ladies who are jealous of uh, Mao Mao, but there's this particular girl from the back that seems different. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing she's an important character. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Well, it's kind of obvious because they really, really kind of highlighted the fact that she's different from all the other yep. kind of thing, right? She's and kind. The fact that she I has mean, she's not really going to be. Sh- I, I mean, it depends on how they plan to animate it. But in the manga, they don't really show her much. But. Uh huh. They did show her like in the most important part of the story in uh-huh. the manga. Yeah. So yes, she's a big part. I mean, kind of obvious when you see. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other one I think I want to mention. Okay, the last thing I want to mention before I you know, uh, let you I'll give your thoughts as well. Is I want kind of the the idea that they give a backstory of Jinshi, right? Oh, yeah. They kind of. I feel like the anime kind of mm-hmm. pushed forward a lot of the stuff from the manga that was yeah. revealed much much later but I, yeah. but let's be honest it's obvious to anybody who can read <laughs> between the lines what's happening especially about its origins <laughs> right but mm-hmm. I love the fact that they're, 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 they're despite that they're still teasing a lot more especially mm-hmm. with that uh, that drinking session with the emperor it just leaves them just an amount it's it doesn't obvious tease. who he is yeah he obviously who he is but at the same time not Right, they're they're mm-hmm. just teasing, right? Like, like, like they know, they know who anybody, who everybody's watching Apothecary dies. I know you have your theories, but I'll just <laughs> tease you just a little bit more. And then yeah. I'm not just talking about the fact that he's drinking with the emperor. I'm also talking about the fact that the emperor is smiling at him, almost like there's a familiarity to it, right? It's not, it's mm-hmm. not boss and employee kind of. They're kind of implying that they don't have a boss employee relationship kind of thing. Yeah. There's something. I mean, yes, I get it that. I don't want to say it because it's. I think I can say it because all right, they, they kind of spelled it out last episode. Like mm-hmm. he's either the brother or son, depending on which story you wanna uh, mm-hmm. gonna go with. But the question is, what does the emperor know? Because as if the emperor doesn't know about the switch, then he, as far as he knows, he's the brother. But if he, mm-hmm. he's aware of the switch, then that means he's aware that he's the son. So when mm-hmm. you look at the fact that he's so casual and informal with Jinshi, the big question really is. Which one is it? And how close does he want to be considering does he know or not know what who or what Jinji is? Yeah. It's a good it's a good thinking process, I guess. Yeah. Since I'm going I'm go I'm you know, I have no more from the manga. But yeah. yeah, you're you're in a good and I I don't remember which part, but in I don't think they will show it in this episode. But I guess since it's a twenty-four episode, they might. Yeah. Uh, they might show, uh, Jinxie's background on how he is born, mm-hmm. and the parent. Yeah. But it's kind of like a mystery part as well. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Even in the manga, they show it as that kind of convoluted yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I did but, hear from some people that the really, really juicy political intrigue we're probably not gonna get this season because it's so much later on yeah but right. again it depends on how they plan to cut it yeah know, but I mean twice. the reveal about the switch happened a lot 
earlier than I expected yeah, it to be. Because I was also spoiled by that, but really? Okay, can, can I ask you in the manga, did, it, did they spoil it that early? Or... No, I mean, I think it's after this episode that there's more like in-between stuff going on, hinting mm-hmm. about that switch. So they, they, it, it was a like... deliberate choice of the anime to reveal it a lot earlier. Mm, yeah. Okay, what do you think of that? That was a I good mean, choice? The, the other parts of the story is kind of more like a character setting. They cut mm. kind of, you know, those other character settings. So there's, I think they just, uh, I mean, it's okay because yeah. it's just, you know, teasing part. All right. So that is the Apothecary Diaries. Okay. Let's talk about the third thing. This I'm really excited to talk about. Okay? Uh, <laughs> and that is season two of Mashal. <laughs> Muscles and music. Okay. Before we talk about the actual plot of the episode, I got to say, I still haven't uh-huh. seen everything, uh-huh. but the opening music is a bag. best of the year already for me. It's <laughs> a bag. Yeah, was that the band's called Creepy Nuts? Like, oh my god, this rap is it's so like. Did it, you know? Did you know that when I watched the first episode of Marshall, I went straight to the manga. <laughs> yes, I can't wait for more already. And it's a finish already, right? It's a finished I... manga. But I will say this, okay? It's always what I love about Mashal is that they don't take it seriously, and I love it, right? Because yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing about my anime, right? And you know this, like even if it's a comedy anime, they take it seriously. Like okay, yeah, mm-hmm. it's comedy, but if you if you watch the intro, the 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 opening sequence and everything, it's as if they're badass heroes, like you know, Konosuba's uh-huh. comedy. But okay, it's they're they're running around beating monsters or whatever. <laughs> Mashal, no. <laughs> no, it's just... comedy. It's stupid. We know it's stupid, <laughs> you know, and and we're gonna treat it as stupid. Mm. Right? Like, I mean, and... even in the manga, like there's something serious going on. Then there's like, bam, comedy time. Let's comedy go. time. Yeah, I know, right? Like, it's like, I, I, I guess... just it's a roller coaster. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, and I love the fact that they don't take themselves seriously and they're having fun yeah. with it. I love the fact and... that Mash himself is such a meathead. <laughs> but I mean he's a meathead but at the same time he's not yeah I guess <laughs> he knows what he's doing it's like it's like you remember in season one right mm-hmm. it ended with a cliffhanger of the school finding out supposedly supposedly the school finding out that he has no power so he has no uh-huh. magic right so in the back of your head after that cliffhanger right you're thinking oh how is Mash gonna get out of the, uh, this problem right and you know, he's just faking to make it. And, yeah, no, yeah, right? So how are they going to solve the problem? And then we get to season two, episode one. And it turns out, how did they solve the problem? They just screamed their way out. They just peer pressured their know, way right? out of it, right? They just said, <laughs> oh, we just screamed him into submission. Oh, yeah, you just peer pressured the guy <laughs> to agree. Okay. Oh that was your solution. Not a fight. Not a challenge. Not a duel. Not it's a magic spell. Lighting. And they just... Basically gaslighted, <laughs> and that was such a funny, brilliant mood to make. That that was the solution I mean, they came up with. <laughs> if you can't fight it, gaslight it. Yeah, don't, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Don't take this manga seriously. That's all. Yeah, it is. it's all the laughter you can it afford. Is, it is. It and is. And every time this manga try to be scary and serious, in the next. Well, I don't know, point one second, it will make you laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't take it seriously. I mean, I, when I watch it, I don't think. I just watch. <laughs> There's, you don't need to think anything about this, okay? <laughs> that is true. It's that all about true. the muscle and the gas. <laughs> and the food. That's true, that's true. Um, what else, what else? Um, I can't um... wait to see the animated part of it. Remind me, Gladys, because I don't remember season one so much. Because I wrote mm-hmm. this down, and there's this. This is such a cre- unique creative decision. I've never seen any anime do this. That they're but, as certain dramatic scenes were happening, instead of an orchestra or anything like that playing, they play a rap song. And I, did, what, did they do that in season one? Did they? I don't remember. That's what I'm saying. Is this a unique si- decision they made? Because I love that the fact that 
what wait what is this playing in the background they're having a, a, a face off and you know other anime would have okay this is where you'll I have an like, orchestral remember. music but this particular it episode did? I don't know did you did you notice it <laughs> they were no, playing actually. Hip-hop. are you sure you're remembering <laughs> No, 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 but I don't remember about season one. But I'm definitely sure about this season two, episode one. They have rap music playing during yeah. some scenes. And like, I was thinking, <laughs> wow, I cannot remember an anime is doing this. <laughs> this, is, this is such a creative choice to have it's hip-hop an, playing. <laughs> it's kind of obvious that this is a comedy just based on the music alone. But, yeah, but again, other comedy anime don't do this. Konosuba doesn't do this. <laughs> okay, so, right? So it's like, okay. Yeah. And then, it, I guess it goes to the whole weird, chaotic nature of it. Right? It's not it's even comedy parody. slapstick. Yeah. It's not even the slapstick kind of parody comedy. Like, that scene where they were all in the Damian party and all the villains were there and so mm-hmm. many things were happening. Like, <laughs> what's happening here? What's happening here? And they don't let you breathe. Right? It's there was no chaotic. rest. Like something ha- funny is happening here, but a split second later, another thing's happening on the other side of the table. Like That's kind of serious. <laughs> then back to the comedy. Then back yeah, to it's the like, theory. okay. And they don't it's really let a it, roller coaster. It's very yeah. much a roller coaster. Um, In the manga, it's kind of slow since you know it's a manga. Yeah. But I guess if you animate it part, yeah. it will be faster. It will be more chaotic. Yeah. I mean, even if I'm reading it, it's still chaotic to me. So uh-huh, what yeah. if it's in if it's in the anime, right? Yeah, and I, I guess also I guess as a consequence of the current arc, right? There seems to be going to be more duels, like magic yeah. duels, because season one was more of magical exams, right? Or or how how is Marshall like, to get out of this situation kind of thing without or like, having it's any? It's like a setting of like what's this? What's this terminology? Yeah. What's that? What's this? But, but this it's more creative way. Exactly. But this time they introduced how many bad mm-hmm. guys? Like one, two, three. Like I, I count like six or seven new characters. Like okay, is he gonna mm-hmm. fight all of these characters? And then you go to the intro. There are even more characters that have yet to be introduced. Like okay, mm-hmm. guess like a lot, lot, lot. Yeah, it sounds like there's gonna be a lot of combat this particular season. Like <laughs> not that you mention it, I don't even remember half of the people I. I've read in the manga. <laughs> <laughs> there's so thing. many. Yeah, there's so many, right? Yeah, they're all weird. They the, the and I guess markings. you will be, uh, you will remember them based on how yeah. funny their situation yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question though, since you're a manga reader. Mm-hmm. Okay. The re- what's the name the red haired guy again? The one with fire, a dot, and then land. You see, I don't even remember the, remember <laughs> their name. <laughs> Yeah, well, they got the. But anyway, okay, we the get red, what they, the red guy. Yeah, the, the yeah, red they, guy. We get what their purpose is. They're powerful mages. But Lemon, the girl, and the other guy, what are they going to do? They almost never do anything. The other guy, like the one with the single blonde hair. Yeah, and the, the, the one who's complaining about everyone always, always in his room. Like, uh, and Lemon he will have well. a big. Uh, he will have a big part in the upcoming okay. uh, part. But Lemon. Yeah. Now it's that still... you mention it, has but... not really appeared much in the manga. So she's just there to be I a mean, p- uh, love interest foil. Yeah, she's the uh, love interest part of the story. Okay. But not really I, much. I, I, I even hesitate to call her a love interest because I don't think Mash is interested in her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's just but in the manga, she's, she is the designated, hey, I'm your lover, girlfriend stuff part. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want to mention? For Marshall, though. About Marshall, anything that sprung to mind when you were watching the episode? If you're watching Marshall, you got you have to uh, manifest your meathead brain. Up yeah. And lower okay. your IQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, anything in specific in the anime that that, that jumped to you? The you know the enemies to friends part is really fast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're just like they're enemies in this you know one yeah. uh, episode, and they're best friends the deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which has always been, been a, which has been, been an anime trope, right? It's been around. Yeah, I mean, Dragon Ball in days, the uh, right? anime. Yeah. I mean, other anime. It's not that fast. Like, you know, there's like this slow friends. To, I mean, enemies to friends. But here yeah. they fought, they forgive, 
their friends and their best buddies. Yeah, and now they dedicate their life to Masha. Which is weird <laughs> because the, the the doll guy was super evil. Right? The doll guy? Yeah. yeah I mean, like like okay. What All he right. did is like kind of unforgivable, but like <laughs> Nah, let's just be okay. friends. You're but then again, good again, kid. again, Dragon Ball did that. Like, you, you begin to realize just how many of Goku's friends are actually all evil at one point. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, I didn't read, you know, that. Yeah. Don't sue me. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah. So that goes for the three anime we'll be talking about this particular episode. Yeah. But I think there's something you want to talk about. Like, you mentioned it to me. A particular yes. manga you wanted to recommend to me, and I told you, okay, don't tell me anything about it. Is and I wanted you to reserve it for the podcast. All right, tell yeah. me what this is because I'm just looking. I'm looking at it. At, mm. I'm looking at the characters right now, and all I can think of um, is: is this Milfy domestic girlfriend? <laughs> kind of thing. What, uh, is look, what is this? Uh, what is this? What is this? Oh, look, so what, okay. what's the Let title? Me explain. And, <laughs> okay, yeah. So for the for the benefit of the audience, and uh, I'll ask the editors to put the text on screen. What is the title of this thing, and what is it about? It is the title is Ashitaba San Chi no Muho Kurashi. Okay. And, and what is it about? It's all about a lovely couple who is living in his mother-in-law's house, and okay. the girl, his wife, has two That's- sister. An auntie and her mom living in the house. So it's a guy. And he's the only guy, along so, with the father, who's working somewhere, I guess. So it's a harem and anime yeah. in some weird it's, way. I mean, let's just say it's not really a harem. Okay. I don't know why there's a harem tag, but it's not a. Harem. Well, it's a harem tag in the sense that he's the single guy in the whole f- I mean, household of girls. No, I mean later on the father will return. But okay. in the first few chapters, there's the father's somewhere off working as a press. So I'm guessing in this picture you, you gave me, right? The wife mm-hmm. is the girl, the green-haired girl on the right. He's blonde. She's, She's blonde. blonde. Actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And they're try. Uh, I mean, I mean, you have to imagine you have a lovely wife, you you know, lovely wife, and you want to make babies. You know, you're newlywed. You want to make uh-huh. family. Okay. Now imagine your mother, your auntie, your little sister, and your baby sister walking on you while you you guys are trying to be safe. Okay, Frisky, let's be. You know, you're trying to be, for the purpose of having a child. Yeah. Okay. So is that the and, premise of this manga? They're yeah. just trying to have a kid. I mean, they're like they want to sh- you know do lovey dovey stuff, but unfortunately. Yeah, family members living. <laughs> okay, so you are telling me that this is actually weirdly wholesome. It is very wholesome because the so, guy only okay. loves her his wife. No NTR. <laughs> no, no, there's no NTR. Okay, but like, good. there's going to be like a sassy situation here and there because of course, I mean, of course. Look at the mom. Look at the sis. Yeah, because I was like, okay, yeah, like especially as I was looking at all the manga covers and the mom really appears in a lot of them <laughs> yeah but like the mom is more like just not embarrassed on what she's doing but she's embarrassing her daughter <laughs> so okay so she's not trying to seduce the guy nope, at least because it's just circumstances just, makes it look weird yeah okay. and she just loved he she loves her husband and her husband is like the same in the same situation as the uh you know the guy Okay, in a sense that what, and, he's, he's stuck with all the women around him. Yep. It's like, uh, there was like one chapter where he says, well, this is the fate of all those who marry into the Ashitaba family. As a, as a male of the Ashitaba, this is what you have to go through. Okay. So like, he's, he's just like a really close-knitted family. And it's really so, wholesome. Prom- I promise. Okay, okay, but why did you want to recommend to me and to the audience this particular one if it's whole? Because it's it's good. <laughs> it's show. Uh, it's like, I mean, imagine you're like you don't have a job yet, like permanent job, so okay. you don't have money to invest on a you know uh what is an apartment or a unit. So, uh, you move in with your in-laws with you know your wife's 
parents or your husband, whatever. And it's kind of show how in a small house, how, you know, people interact. Like, you can't have privacy <laughs> in this house. Okay. Like, so it's about... Seriously. So let me, let me summarize. It's about a husband and a wife trying to get frisky... But, but can. all their family members interrupt their friskiness. Yes. Okay. Almost like 95% of the time. So it's just basically about a guy getting blocked. Kind of. His milfy mother in law. Because, like, the, uh, uh, the mother and the. Uh, no, no. The mother wants to see them doing it. What? What is no, really that? I mean, like, she's trying to see if they're doing it so she can. You know, like. She wants a grandchild or yeah. something like that. And she's like, every time they're complaining, like, Mom, don't do this. Or like, Mom, they're doing it again. Or like, no. But the mother will always reply like, but didn't you know that's how I made you? <laughs> so no filter. So she's a mo- she has no filter. Basically. Yeah, she's a mom mom. Like, mom. Like, kind of like that. When, when you're interacting with her like okay, mom okay. why do you have to do this mom or okay, like I, I have a question is, <laughs> our, how, is, is it etchy in any way kind of it's etchy in a way like okay the, I guess, the I guess, husband and wife kind of it I, ca- I guess not, the better no. question I have to ask is can I show this on Twitch if I stream this uh, some part in other words, no. Okay. In other words, no. I mean, there's like you know, boob shot in there. Okay. Like, that's. I, I obviously it's, I can't. If that's the case, it's live. Yeah, you can. It's live. <laughs> okay. Okay. So sorry, guys. I'll um, you know what? I'll put it as a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, Sup- I think that's much better. <laughs> support the Patreon exclusive. It's at least it's wholesome. That is funny, but there's like kind of showy parts here and there. Uh-huh. And yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, it's re- you will love it from it. Uh, I give know, it a five star out of five. You know what, Gladys? Uh, you keep recommending stuff to me, and I, I enjoy most of it. So, yeah. <laughs> Unless it's for memes, but you know. <laughs> look, look, there was only one manga you recommended to me that I got, <laughs> got grossed out, and it was that Junji Ito p- manga thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I found it randomly and I have okay. to share it. Again, another page on exclusive what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I guess that's all we have for today's episode. Uh, yeah. Gladys, thank you so much for joining me on this. And thank uh, you for yeah. inviting me. Well, we'll be doing this for the long haul for the entire winter season. So join mm-hmm. us for the next video. We're going to tackle even more. Uh, of the winter episodes and we'll be doing this weekly actually we'll be doing this twice a week as we go through all the anime we were watching and you know the episodes as they come out and as the arcs come out okay so uh, yeah. with, but yeah for now with, with, uh, uh, all I can say is please support us give us a like and subscribe and, but even if you don't want to do that that's fine but if you do uh, may I also interest you in our Patreon where you can actually see me react to all the videos that we are talk uh with, that we've been talking about even uh, the sassy parts even the sassy parts yes <laughs> all right yeah. as well as other anime we haven't talked about so yeah uh but until then uh, i'll see you guys in the next video bye everyone ciao